To be affected by something means that you have been touched by it and moved by it. For example, the loss of a child affects one deeply and moves one into an array of emotions and actions. Anger, pain, withdrawal from people, depression, and then hopefully at some point after I guess many years by God's grace, acceptance and peace with God, even worship of Him who allowed your child to be taken No more fist in the air and a new glorious hope in him and the resurrection. So running on this theme of being affected, I have an important question to ask you. I know you have been affected by the word of God and by good sermons and by good teachings at church and on the internet. Moments where you have understood a spiritual principle that has moved you to change your life by the power of the Holy Spirit to let go of an addiction or to to make you love your spouse better or to let go of fear and anxiety. I know this. So here's my question to you in a pointed form. You have been affected and moved by the word of God and by good sermons and good teachings. But have you been moved by the bride of Christ? Has she, the fellowship of believers, your new brothers and sisters in Christ, have they affected you? And have they affected you into a place of affection? Let me further explain my question with an example. The thumbnail picture of the sermon that I guess you're looking at now is a picture of four women in our fellowship, in our church, whom I believe have been affected to affection. I love looking at this picture. There's something profoundly pure and holy about it. The photo was taken years back on Steinfury's farm, Ruach, outside Rustenburg, which is a holy place. It's been set aside for God. And these four women and others were busy with an outreach for the Sunday school children at Ruach. And if you look at that picture, you'll notice three black women and one white woman. Three South Africans and one Zimbabwe. An engineer, a graphic designer a teacher and a housewife businesswoman, mother tongue Setswana, Afrikaans, Shona and Koza. These women are so different, yet they are seamlessly, supernaturally united in Christ. And I know each one of them and I know their holy affection for Christ and for his bride, the church. And so, as I've said, I love looking at this picture. So, flowing from that, my question to you is, have you experienced the affection, the caring, the love that you can see in that picture? Have you experienced that? Have you been affected yourself to affection? Because I want you to know that that is God's will for you within the body of Christ. This intimate fellowship is a very special gift from heaven you can buy it nowhere it comes from god and it is found by those who seek it diligently god's will is not that you only come to church for the sermon and then leave god's will is not that you avoid the church bri and the church poiki day and the women's breakfast and the prayer meetings and the feeding outreaches and the youth meetings and the senior fellowship and the Bible studies. That is not God's will for you. And religion has unfortunately taught many of us that we can be like Switzerland in the Second World War. Neutral. We are present physically, but we're not involved, not affected by the fellowship. This is not God's will. Internet church is not church. Consumer church where you think you can come just for the sermon or follow the best preacher, is not church. And I tell you with all respect and humility, you're deceived and disobedient if you live out your faith in this manner, disconnected from the church, unaffected by it. Listen to what the Apostle Peter says, 1 Peter 1 verses 22 to 25 I'm just going to look at verse 22. Since you have purified your souls in obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brothers and sisters, fervently love one another 
from the heart. Fervently love one another from the heart. This is a demand for holy affection between brothers and sisters. Demonstrable and real. And the Apostle Peter doesn't leave it there. In 1 Peter 5 verse 14 he says, Greet one another with a kiss of love. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Now just as background, it was common custom in those days in the early church for people to kiss each other on the cheek to display their love, their sincere affection and their friendship. And so you can understand then why Judas's betraying Jesus with a kiss was so terribly hurtful to Christ. Now our custom these days in our own church, and I think most churches, is not a kiss on the cheek. I guess the closest we go is a hug. At some point in time, the devil, by way of religion, sanitized affection from the church. It's a terrible thing. Let me give you an example of how it should be if things are healthy from the scriptures. In Acts chapter 20 verses 36 to 38, Paul says goodbye to the elders at Ephesus. Now listen to this account of what happened. When Paul had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they all began to weep aloud and embraced Paul and repeatedly kissed him, grieving especially of the word which had it spoken that they would not see his face again. And listen to that. And repeatedly kissed him. Do you see the deep affection and connection between Paul and the elders, between the believers, which is an example to you and me? They repeatedly kissed him. Now Paul, the Apostle Paul, echoes what Peter instructed in holy demonstration of affection. Listen to this, Romans 16, 16. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. 1 Corinthians 16, 20. All the brothers and sisters greet you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. Greet one another with a holy kiss. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 26. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. Hopefully you can see from those verses that the thought of having a sanitized church of affection is far away from what God has set and what God has explained to us through Scripture. You see, the church is not simply the dispenser of a product like Checkers or Pick a Bay or Hypermarket. It's not there simply for your benefit alone so that you may get some good word or tick your conscience. The church, the bride, is a supernatural living organism and the bride, the living bride of the living, risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And Christ demands your affection for her as his affection rests on you and on her. And he demands that your affection be real and be seen by your presence, by your caring, by your fervent love, our text today, by your hug and by your holy kiss. So my question is, where do you stand today? Are you a selfish consumer? Because I see this. Consumers, people who come to church only to receive, never to love others fervently. They even come to church and pick and choose on the basis of who preaches best. Are you a selfish consumer? Or have you been so affected as to have affection for the bride? Because that's what God wants from you. I close, if you find my sermons or someone else's sermons wonderful, well, that's great. But if you have no affection for the church and you continue to remain aloof after all these years of listening to me or to someone else, please stop listening to us immediately. And go and find a Holy Spirit filled preacher who affects you to affection for the bride of Christ. Because knowledge of God without affection for his bride is dead and smelly religion and it puts 
into question whether you have actually been born again. And if you have no affection, the Apostle Paul tells you that you are a noisy gong, or a clanging cymbal, and quite frankly a burden to the church. And all I can say then is run, forest, run. Christianity with no affection for the bride is no Christianity at all. I ask you to seek this out. I ask you to spend time with God. Ask Him to show you how you may become affected and move to affection. Put yourself in the stream where you will experience this. Attend the functions of the church. Attend to relationships within the church. Make yourself vulnerable. Love the believers. Love those who are in Christ fervently. May God bless you so. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.